This is the Nike Invincible Run 3, and it's a very confusing shoe. For some people, it's an easy day max cushion trainer, and for others, it's gonna be a long run workout shoe. But I think for a lot of people, it's only going to be the one or the other. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and I'm a non-elite runner who reviews shoes here on YouTube. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about the Nike Invincible Run 3. But before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that I bought myself. No one sent it to me, no one's paying me to make this video, and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with those disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the Nike Invincible Run 3. Three. First, let's go over some of the specs on paper. This is a 40 millimeter stack height shoe with a nine millimeter drop. I think it was an eight and a half millimeter drop last year, and I'm suspecting it's probably still that, but they're just calling it rounding up nine millimeters this year. So on paper, we have 31 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. And the only thing that we've got is Zoom X, which is Nike's premier racing foam, but they put it into a non-racing application. Usually when we see Zoom X foam in a racing shoe from Nike, it's either combined with a carbon fiber plate, a Zoom air pocket, or both. So there's a lot of other kind of technologies that go along with it. But the Nike Invincible Run 3 is one of those rare shoes where we get to feel just what the Zoom X itself does. To protect that foam though, we've got a nearly full rubber coverage outsole with just a couple of cutouts to help with flex grooving and also some perforation, again, to help the rubber bend a little bit easier and also to save just a little bit of weight. On the upper, that's where we have a lot of changes that are going on in the shoe for this year. For me, the thing that stands out most is they've gotten rid of a lot of the extra padding that kind of like was adorned, if not kind of like stapled on to the outside of the shoe last year. And we've also lost a lot of the padding on the inside of the shoe too. It's still a very comfortable fit and it's gonna fit a variety of heel sizes and types because there is a nice foam bumper pad here in the back to keep that ankle locked into place. And the material that they're using, they're saying that it's flying it, but I do not think this is Flyknit. It's a problem that I had with versions one and versions two of the Nike Invincible Run Flyknit. But at least with the Nike Invincible Run 3, they've dropped the actual word Flyknit from the title of the shoe. I know that's a small thing, but it's kind of like a step or an admission in the right direction. Although in the product description, they're still calling this Flyknit. The reason why I don't think this is Flyknit is because it's not breathable, it's not that stretchy, and it's just, feels like someone took like a regular kind of like mesh upper of a shoe and wanted to make it waterproof by like rubbing Mod Podge all over it and it just kind of looks strangely shiny and I'm overall just not enjoying the look. I say to Nike, bring back real Flyknit. Give me the Flyknit from the Vaporfly 4%, the Zoom Fly 2 Flyknit, or the Epic React. That's real Flyknit. Or even give us Atomknit. Can we have that from the Alpha Fly? Those are all fantastic iterations of knit materials in an upper that are breathable, stretchy, comfortable, and confident inspiring on the run. This stuff right here, it's kind of like, I don't know what it is, but I'm just not a huge fan of it. And I do think that real flying it would probably help with the weight on this shoe as well, because this shoe comes in at 10.9 ounces or 310 grams. All right, as much as I don't like the kind of look of the knit upper material, I do think that the shoe looks good, but then again, we don't pick shoes based on the way they look now, do we? So let's talk about what it was like to run in the shoe. And here, that's where I feel like this is kind of like a choose your own adventure, although, I kind of feel like it's almost like a sorting hat where the shoe chooses you because I don't think you get to pick. The shoe will tell you what it wants to do with you. So first, I think for a lot of people that are gonna try this shoe, see that giant huge stack of Zoom X foam and think that this is an easy day, 
max cushion kind of shoe. And for me, it didn't really work that way. Uh, I think that there's just something odd going on here. I don't know if it's this heel clip, which seems to be really long and extends very far, giving a lot of structure to this heel cup, but also kind of, I think, making the transition from the heel area of the shoe down to the forefoot just a little bit awkward. So instead of having a nice smooth transition from 40 to 31 millimeters, it feels like it's 40, 40, 40, 40, and then it slams down to 31. And I feel there's like an awkward transition here. So for me, it like the first mile of every run in this shoe, it just felt like, like a like clop clop like I would just slap slap like one side of the shoe would hit and then the other side of the shoe would hit and there would be no transition in the middle and so it took a really long time for like my foot to kind of get used to what's going on in the shoe or to my foot strike to adjust so that way I was only landing in the forefoot and midfoot area kind of like from the middle of the arch forward but once I did at easy paces the shoe is relatively easy to get into a rhythm and if you fell out of rhythm you were very quickly reminded of that kind of like clop clop feeling you could hear the difference in your foot strike whenever you were kind of not doing what the shoe wanted you to do and I did get a reasonably cushioned experience and I thought it was pretty good I was able to log 10 mile runs with relatively few problems and uh, overall it felt like this was a pretty decent shoe. It tended to want me to go a little bit faster than I wanted to go for my easy paces. Uh, but overall it was a good amount of cushion underfoot, a good amount of room in the toe box, especially for a Nike shoe. So all like above average, pretty good kind of stuff. But if I were to backtrack from that side of the choose your own adventure and go down this other way, that's where things got really exciting to me. Cause remember I said like the shoe wanted to go a little bit faster than I wanted to go for my easy days. So I thought, you know what, let's put it into a workout. Uh, the other thing that had me thinking that this might be a good idea is, you know, my friend Ben Johnson loves this shoe. I think before the shoe was even released uh, for sale, he had an early pair that he logged like 300 or 400 miles in him. And he likes to take his invincible run shoes for speedier runs, not just easy max cushion types of runs. So I thought, you know what? This guy knows what's up. So let's at least give that a try. So I took it out for a taper workout, getting ready for the Tokyo Marathon. And so I had a little bit more than 10 miles. And the workout was uh, six by mile at marathon effort with a 90 second recovery. So plenty of time to recover, not that intense of a run, but enough to kind of remind the body that, you know, it's we're not done with training. We're just tapering for a race. And I found like at that effort level, the invincible run was actually really nice using just the kind of like forward part of the shoe, I felt like I was able to get up to marathon pace with a nice amount of spring and response from the shoe. I'm still getting all the squishiness that I want in terms of when my foot hits the ground, but that pop off is really nice when I'm pushing off the ground at that kind of marathon effort. So I felt like this shoe really is nice. I felt like I was having a very good time running in this shoe. Now it wasn't perfect though, uh, because again, that kind of transition from the heel to the forefoot of the shoe became a problem again, not in the left shoe, but in the right shoe, where I think my right arch is a little bit lower. I have a medium arch in the right side and a high arch on the left side. The transition in the shoe from the heel to the forefoot was kind of poking me right in the center of the arch. And that in turn, as my foot was hitting the ground, led to a couple of toes starting to feel numb about two thirds of the way through the run for my workout session. And so it was something that wasn't painful, but it was something that I noticed and it was a little bit of a distraction in trying to get through the end of the workout. I thought it might make me cut the workout a little bit short, but I was able to complete it without any problem. Just got a couple of numb toes. Now I'm hoping that that's something that goes away, but I've already got like 30 or 40 miles in the shoe. And that's the kind of thing that typically with Nike shoes tends to go away after like 10 miles for me, if it happens. And so I think that this is an issue that may persist a little bit longer than usual, possibly because of the size and shape of the heel clip that's in the shoe, possibly uh, because of the difference in foam using that Zumex foam and like the rate at which it can kind of mold to the shape of your feet. Now, I think that I can probably also take this shoe up to half marathon pace and maybe for a little bit of threshold work, but really for a threshold, like mile repeat type of workout, that's something that I'd really like to reach for carbon for. So I feel like a shoe like this, my sweet spot for it's gonna be like middle of the training block, really long run, 
a big chunk of marathon effort I gotta put in there. So I wanna be able to do that, get to those marathon paces easily, be able to hold it easily, but also be able to cover quickly for my next session. I feel like the Invincible Run 3 is gonna be pretty nice because of the way that this foam is really well suited for when you are picking up the pace and putting just a little bit more work in. I feel like that's what really brings this foam to life when you're working at those effort levels, when the shoe is shaped and sized the way this shoe is. So now let's move over to the summary portion of the video so I can kind of wrap up some of my thoughts. I think that this shoe is best for, I guess like one of two things. Uh, you're either gonna love it for your easy runs and your max cushion recovery day runs, or you're either gonna love it for workouts uh, sessions and maybe even doing some marathon racing if you're the type of person that doesn't necessarily want to race in carbon. So I feel like those are kind of the two things that it might be good for, but I don't think there's going to be a lot of crossover. At least that's my hypothesis at this point between those two groups. So this is one of those rare shoes that has kind of like two separate islands of ways that people tend to like it. And I'm really not sure at this point yet how to figure out who's gonna fall into which category. So it might just be a shoe that you have to try on for yourself to see how you like it best. Now, if you do wanna pick up this shoe, there's a couple of options to pair it with and a couple of things that you should also consider. But again, I think it's gonna depend on kind of like which path the sorting hat puts you down on. If you like the Invincible Run 3 as an easy day shoe or a max cushion recovery shoe, then I think that a racing shoe that you're really gonna like that might pair well with it is gonna be the Endorphin Elite. I feel like this is a much lighter shoe, but it's also tall, it's got a lot of stack height, and it's got a really great cushion to it. And I feel like a lot of the dynamics that I'm feeling in this shoe during my long run at marathon effort as a session is gonna translate pretty well over to racing a marathon in the Endorphin Elite. And if you're looking for an alternative, maybe this shoe and this shiny flight it isn't for you, I think another shoe that you're probably gonna be really interested in checking out is gonna be the Tracksmith Elliott. Both of these shoes are about the same price and they both use the same kind of source material for the midsole foams, although they implement it in very different ways, either both all Piba based shoes, but they do feel a little bit different. The tracks with Elliott feeling a little bit more like a traditional running shoe, but also has a little bit more firm than the Invincible Run 3. Now, let's say you're more like me and you only like this shoe as a speedier option. I think that a shoe that you can pair this with is gonna be a daily trainer. So you do like some longer run sessions in this shoe. Then for daily training, I feel like the Nova Blast 3 is gonna be a really nice, bouncy, springy, fun option for you to take on your easy days. Maybe you got an easy run with some strides. I feel like this is gonna be nice. And then for your long run on the weekends, reach for that Invincible Run 3. But if you're not sure about the Invincible Run 3 as a shoe that you're gonna use for workouts and you're looking for a different premium racing foam but not carbon plated option, then I think you should look again at Asics at the Super Blast. Now this is another shoe that I think is really kind of polarizing in a way in that some people like it for max cushion runs and some people like it for workout sessions. I like this shoe for running marathon effort runs. In fact, I raced CIM in this last December and by the end of the race, I kind of was missing a little bit of that carbon snappiness, but it was really easy on the body and it was fun to be able to run a long stretch of marathon miles in this shoe. That's kind of exactly how I'm looking at the Invincible Run 3 these days. So that's another option you could look at. Again, these are about the same price with the Invincible Run 3 being the more affordably priced option. And as far as the pricing goes on this shoe, it retails at 180 bucks and it just came out. So this is a price that you're gonna see for quite a while. I do believe there's a variety of colors available and I'm thinking that for a long run workout shoe, that you can sometimes take for easy runs maybe. I feel like that 180 is a lot of money, but I think at the right price. So I feel like this is a shoe that is worth picking up if you're looking for that non-carbon plated workout shoe, or maybe just a really cushy, easy day shoe that is also really comfortable for casual use as well. But there is also in some places, in some sizes, some inventory of the Invincible Run 2. And I've been seeing that at anywhere between like 120 and 140 bucks. There are some differences between versions 1 slash 2 and 3, but I feel like the if you need to save a couple of bucks, that's also going to be another way 
that you can go. So those are my thoughts on the Invincible Run 3. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?